So what are you psyched about right now? What are you excited about? And here's the fun thing. You'll always see <clears throat> that when you're really, really, really in your excitement, in your flow, in your passion, in that space, and I'll explain later how this all ties into manifesting your reality, but this is the basis. This is the most important part of it. When you are tapped into yourself, literally <clears throat> tapped into all of yourself, when you're turned on, when you're riding that wave of resonance or excitement or joy, you are not of this world in the sense that you're not physically focused, you're not physically based, you're not equating reality as we would call reality, like physical circumstantial reality. You're not really seeing that. You're not really equating that with who you are, what you want to be expressing, how you want to express that, how you want to experience yourself. All of that is free from the room that we're in at this point. The checks you need to pay. The stuff that needs to get done. Your flow is independent, not separate, but independent from reality. And what you'll see is that when you're tapped in, you don't see reality. And when you're not tapped in, you see reality. And by reality, I don't mean the truth of all that is. By reality, I just mean very mundanely everyday life, circumstances. Right now, the word reality refers to your circumstances. You don't see circumstances when you're in your flow. When you're in your highest state of flow, you don't see circumstances. You only taste your own excitement, your own joy, your own peace, your own bliss, your own satisfaction, your own overwhelming abundance. You're tapped in. That is your reality. There is no circumstances. Doesn't mean you cannot appropriately respond to circumstances, but it takes up a minimal portion of your consciousness. The majority of your consciousness is free, is non-physical in that sense, non-physically based. It's in the realm of state of being, in the realm of, in a sense, thoughts or concepts, in the realm of ideas, like abstract movement, movement of the mental body. It is on the level of joy, bliss, energy. Who has noticed that when they are tapped in to this, when they are turned on, when they are in their flow of being psyched, that they are not actually seeing circumstances? Have you noticed that? Just raise your hand if you have. In a sense, it could be all the same to you. It could be taken away from you. It could not be taken away from you. And this is where it becomes different from the personality structure being disembodied or disconnected, trying to manifest this reality as a separate entity. The difference between that and being turned on is that things can be taken away from you or not. It's all the same because you're not focused in on the level, on the realm of circumstances. Or if you are, it's just to notice, just to make observations, just as a mirror that you peek in briefly to, oh, that's interesting reflection. Mm, how does that fit into my flow or not? How does that add to my expansion, to my wisdom, to my clarity, to my love, to my passion? And how can I add my passion to whatever is around me? Not by getting it out of me and placing it over there, but by remaining in my own non-physically focused state of energy. Does this make sense so far? The difference between being circumstantially focused into the things and the circumstances and the people and everything that seems to dictate your life. And you can also automatically feel that sense of being a victim of life, which again is being separate, which again is being not plugged in. Therefore, to be attentive to reality, which is what we're all teaching each other, and not you guys, but you know, everyone else is to be separate. We are constantly reinforcing, don't tap into your joy. Don't tap into your well of abundance. Don't tap into your joy and creativity and bliss because it's selfish. It separates you from everyone else. But the opposite is true. Can you see that? When you don't do that, you're separating yourself. You feel like you're a victim. You're focused 99.9% .9 on your circumstances. That's where you derive your sense of identity from. And you can only do that if there's two things. In your joy, there's only one thing. There's only being. There's only beingness. Your attention turns from duality in that sense to oneness, to presence, to beingness.
from things and doing to being. It doesn't mean you're not doing, it doesn't mean you're not expressing, but it happens as a natural side effect of a working or being conscious to the level of being, which is one. There's only one beingness, only one being. So when you're tapped in to yourself, when you're tuned into what excites you, what you wish to create, whatever that may be, and believe me, you wish to create something, otherwise you would not be here. It can be very abstract, it can be very abnormal, it can be very unconventional. It may not seem to have any form, any shape. It may not seem to be obvious. It may not seem to have a label given by society. It may not be being a lawyer, being a doctor. It may be something very new, something very abstract, something very undefined. Nevertheless, you are here to constantly co-create. If not, again, you would simply drop dead or your body would. So you're here because you're here to create, you're here to expand, you're here to experience. And the only way to effectively do that is to tune into yourself, to be tapped in, to being psyched, to be free, to be detached from the circumstances so that you can get to know that space free from circumstances, free from the circumstantial focus. Again, does that make sense so far? Try to get a real feel for that because that's the most usable thing, the most practicable, the most practical thing is for you to right now tune into the back and forth of circumstance focus, which instantly creates the separation victimization state, or the beingness focus, which instantly gets you tuned into something that excites you, something that is flowing, something that is juicy, something that is beautiful, something that is divine, something that is abundant, something that is tuned in, tapped in. Difference, a difference in the focus of consciousness. Where is your focal point? Is your focal point out there, then who are you? You are a subject, you are a victim, you are an observer of reality, reality therefore being real. Whereas if you're tuned into being and turned away from the focus of circumstance, the circumstantial focus, what is left? If you let the emptiness, which is really all it is, the empty mirror, the smoke and mirrors of appearances, if you just let them be themselves for a moment, let them be the emptiness that they are, let them be the non-substance that they are, suddenly, boom, something happens. You expand. There is clarity of vision, once again. There is perhaps even one-pointedness of vision in certain ways. Intentionality, desire, freedom, the vision who you are as well as the vision of just the clarity of vision itself, the clarity of seeing or being itself. Does that make sense? So you gain both the peace and the freedom and the clarity of presence, isness, consciousness. The moment you take that step away from being focused into circumstances, instantaneously, when you just let circumstances be the empty smoke and mirrors that they are, it's like your aura can breathe again. It's like not your physical lungs, although they can follow too. It's like your energetic lungs like <sighs> have been underwater for so long and now they're breathing and expanding and you feel the aliveness rush through your being and your body again. You're tuned in, you're psyched, you're turned on. Why? Because you have remembered that circumstances are just mirrors, smoke and mirrors. They are not real. They are not meant to dictate reality. They are not meant to dictate these divine gods and goddesses that are all meant to co-create 